I'm Alan from Fox Search. We're one of the contestants in the Hong Kong Tri Quarter X Prize. And we were over on the 1900 block over here. And we were one of the, the teams on the corner, 1907 was our booth. We had the modular phone system from Google Era. Um, we chose that platform. It's, it's a phone platform, and Google got behind it after they bought Motorola. And Motorola originally had the best technology program that developed a modular sm uh, smartphone. The, re the reason we were really interested in it is the modules could be built individually and upgraded individually. We worked with a couple of sensor companies and every three months there'd be a new sensor coming out so we didn't want to get locked in with a, a total platform that had to go through FDA approval over and over again. So we went with the modular approach and it happened just in time for us with uh, Google acquiring Motorola. They're throwing a lot of weight behind. They want to go put phones out for the next five billion uh, phone users, they claim. So that's about eight modules per phone, maybe you know a few hundred million modules this year even. And if we can add a couple sensors like a vital module for the the vitals that we're monitoring in this competition, then those can be deployed all over the world. And it's, the cost is coming down really quickly. The modules are going to be printed, 3D printed by 3D systems. And Fox Search is a company that's in California. We're along the Bioscience Corridor on the 101. And we are part of the Bioscience Lines in Thousand Oaks, California with other companies, large companies, that have a lot more resources than our little startup, like Amgen and, and Baxter Pharmaceutical. We have um, foundations near us, like the California Longevity, um, Dole, um, Hilton, um, Alfred E. Mann, and Cavalry. And those organizations are really easy to work with on the Bioscience Alliance team. We're we can collaborate and ask questions anytime we want. We, so we have a lot of resources in our neighborhood. We formed a, an incubator as well. Um, Mike, out, out Ms. Gina, myself, we called the 101 Incubator. And Boxer kind of sprang out of that. Our name is, is ugly. It, it's Voxel and Research mashed together and trademarked. So two words, now it's one, no one can spell it. You go to voxsearch.com, um, you can find us, B-O-X-E-A-R-C-H, Twitter, same name, YouTube, same name, Facebook, same name. Um, if you want to, you know, query Twitter and type ATA 2014 Vox Search, you'll find things we've done or things we're working on or people we know and links we're following. We're always on Facebook, we're always on Twitter, we're always on Google and YouTube. We are working with a lot of uh, new little companies in the incubator space. A lot of startups coming out of some colleges and universities that are going to be interviewing the one-on-one -on -one incubator, I hope, soon. And our model will be give them, will actually be financing those companies at a tune of about quarter million per quarter, and giving them about 18 months runway. We're wrapping around and providing the legal and the infrastructure, the mentoring and um, expertise from the community. And our corporation, Box Search, and the 101 Incubator is a, is a public benefit corporation, for profit. And as a California public benefit corporation, we have a sustainability in our charter. And we also have um, a charter to stay local and help support the community and create jobs within the, the along the 101. Uh, 101 is very long, so that was probably a good name. Uh, but we got calls from Hungary and, and China and other places thinking we're some kind of a tutorial. So we could always go that route too. We're also, we, we're technology makers. Mike's formed two maker spaces in the LA area and, and 
uh, with the 101 and, and Mike's help, we're forming the Kineo Makerspace, which will be a, a separate facility and have lots of tools and 3D printers and stuff. Vox is having a lot of fun because we're getting sponsors like SolidWorks that gives us a lot. Um, we don't have to spend money, so we get a lot of software for free. And some of those tools and the 3D printers and stuff will go over to the makerspace when we're done with this competition. What we hope to achieve um, is bring the cost down. And we know with everybody building everything here with the enterprise, um, each team will have their expertise and each, each um, new sensor will actually extend the platform. We're looking at things like a mass spectrometer. We're looking at labs on a chip. Um, we're looking at a lot of technology that's probably not great for the FDA clearance right now. So our first little version one is all non-invasive. We're using a, a lot of photonic uh, light, um, NIR, near infrared, for um, glucose tests and, and similar tests. We're using onboard camera systems, and we're using our, uh, to, for the melanoma shingles and so on. We have a back end that's already been built since we were doing medical image uh, testing anyway. The medical imaging is in a database that's HIPAA compliant. We're already uh, backwards compatible with the Veterans Administration and Blue Button. And we're licensed by the Veterans Administration to use Blue Button and our uh, personal medical record database. So we can interchange data with them or hospitals that use the Blue Button VA system. Our future um, electronic medical record will contain all medical images, all data from the tricorder, and all previous medical data stored in that Blue Button or hospital system. It's portable, for the HIPAA compliance part of it is portable. So it belongs to the patient, not the, the insurance company or the hospital. The patient can take it with them. Each patient will have a patient record. It's part of the VA system and part of the blue button system. And where our schema is totally compliant with it, mirrors it. We're have even plans to extend that database into a genome sequence. Um, it's big data, but data storage is really, really cheap. Personally, I've been in computers for over 30 years, and photonics and lasers for 28 years. Um, I sold Halter Monitor previously in the mid-80s for a while, a four, little four-lead um, device that went home for 24 hours. At that time, there was only 16K on a device. so. We had to be sneaky with how we recorded 24 hours. Part of that was allowing the physician to select the parameters they really wanted to record. Um, there's lots more online, the red light's blinking, and that's good. Great, thanks. Okay. Good job.